All right. Hi, Adam. Thanks very much for joining us today. Um, you've agreed to come on board and tell us a little bit around yourself, your journey of recovery, um, and some little nuggets of wisdom that you can impart to anyone who's listening to this. Um, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your case history? Bring us, bring us up to speed. Tell us what's been going on. Yeah, so um, I first started having uh, CPPS symptoms when I was in my 20s. Um, and it was around a time when, you know, I was going through some things in my personal life. Um, it was fairly early on in my career. So, you know, lots of sort of work related stress and not always um, dealing with that in the best way. Um, and I guess I, I started to notice symptoms, went to see a doctor at that time. Um, and there was a, a trace of an infection um, from a urine sample, although it wasn't particularly conclusive, um, but they prescribed a, a short course of antibiotics. That was all fine. Um, then the symptoms reoccurred um you know and, and and i sort of lived with them for a period of six months to a year when i was in my 20s um and it came to a point where you know they got they sort of got to you know a level where i wanted to do something about it um and um went to see a urologist um you know regular meetings with my gp um they prescribed another course of antibiotics slightly longer periods four weeks this time and symptoms went away um, and actually didn't really come back for 10 12 years um, so I had quite a long period of not really having any symptoms at all um, and I thought well you know it's just a minor thing didn't really give it much more thought um, and then early in 2021, um, I started getting the symptoms again um, and then sort of took me back to, to where I was um, when I was in my 20s, um, obviously in my late 30s now. So um, slightly different place in my life um, in terms of the symptoms, how, how they are for me. Um, I've, I've never really got sort of extreme pain. It's tended to be you know, I would describe it as a dull aching um, in my pelvic area. So um, in the perineum, um, lower back, buttocks, um, you know, my uh, rectum, um, the base of my bladder. Um, and it's just sort of quite unpleasant and just tends to grind you down. Um, so that's that's how it manifested for me. Um, I also had some quite strange symptoms like just the general sensitivity in my pelvic region, which sometimes made walking difficult. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was quite strange. Um, but yeah, when, when something as simple as walking is, is not necessarily that easy then, uh, and particularly for me, who's quite an active person, then that, um, that, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. So anyway, went through the whole process of, you know, I'd, I'd had these symptoms before. So, and, I, and, and I'd had the diagnosis of chronic prostatitis at, when I was in my 20s. So I knew what it was. Um, I went back to see a GP um, and sort of went down the urologist routes, um, you know, ultrasounds, uh, flexible cystoscopies, um, not particularly pleasant. Um, and got to a point where we'd ruled out that, that you know, there wasn't necessarily anything wrong, seriously, from a medical point of view. Um, and then you're left with this um, chronic prostatitis or CPPS diagnosis. And really not much more support um, as far as you know, the healthcare profession is, is concerned. Um, so, yeah, I was then very much left in this no man's land of working out uh, what I do and and how I take this forward and how I try and tackle this, this condition and the symptoms that we're presenting. That's fabulous. Thank you very much, Adam. And not only, <clears throat> excuse me, is there pain and discomfort, but you also mentioned there about 
you know how much else that can influence us as well so not only is, are we experiencing something that's vastly unpleasant as well but the knock-on effect that can have over to something that we often take for granted you mentioned walking in your particular case yeah exactly yeah and you know um all of the things that i think um that I, i'm just been talked about a lot i'm sure in the recovery room but all of the things that you're told by the healthcare prof professionals which are you know you can't drink you can't drink caffeine you can't cycle i'm a keen cyclist um you know you can't ejaculate or you should ejaculate like you know not particularly conclusive but when you when you're sort of given that advice I mean, your your life shrinks because of the symptoms, but then your life shrinks even further because of that advice. And it's you're then sort of having to navigate your way around all of these things. Um, you know, and in my case, it resulted in some quite sort of significant health anxiety. Um, and, you know, that then has also a, a knock on effect on on them, um, you know, your your day to day living, really. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough one to, <laughs> to navigate yeah. your way through. Yeah, totally. I mean, uncertainty is it almost kind of feeds uncertainty then as well, doesn't it? You know, what do mm. I do? What can I do? What should I do? Is this mm. what's causing it? Maybe I should cut this out as well. Maybe, maybe I walked down the stairs the wrong way, or maybe I got out of bed, or maybe these trousers or those socks or that program or that bowl of cornflakes, or, you know, it can really, really become very, very yeah. much, I don't quite know what to do. I think that the test I tried to apply when all of those thoughts were going through my head was... I was doing this for years before I started getting these symptoms. So mm. I was eating this food for years before I was getting the symptoms, these symptoms. And, you know, I'm generally quite sensible in what I eat anyway. I have a cup, one or two cups of coffee a day. Um, I was doing that for years before I had these symptoms. So why should the situation be different now? You know, if I go out and have a drink, I've been doing that for years before I got these symptoms. So what why am i now starting to worry about all of this stuff um you know there's something else that's going on here that's causing the symptoms for me that's that's you know i suppose the position that i got to and i think it's a good anchoring point as well isn't it you know add some common sense if you like into the equation mm. which can sometimes go amiss um when when we don't know what to believe and when we look online and that becomes our resource for information it can become very confusing mm -hmm. so you mentioned there a question that you had posed to yourself a way of kind of bringing back a, a reality check would there were there other components were there maybe three things that you might be able to identify as being also alongside this a, a, as integral components of your recovery yeah, I suppose I'll try. There's lots of different bits. I tried to group them together into three areas. So I think the first for me is physical activity. Um, so for me, that was hugely important just to sort of, well, hugely important for your physical and mental well being, but also to get you away from the idea that you're not well. Um, actually, getting back to physical activity is quite important. Um, and, you know, doing what you can. Um, so um, it, it took me a while to get back on my bike, um, but I got back on my bike and until I was able to get back on my bike, I was swimming regularly, um, you know, doing yoga. Um, and I think you just sort of, you build it back up, but physical activity has always been important in my recovery. Um, and I think also something that you, helped me understand as well was that some of the physical activity that I was doing was focusing in on my pelvic area so some particular I was using yoga to do particular um you know some pelvic floor relaxation exercises for example um when actually that just brings the attention back to your pelvis and it brings the emphasis back onto your pelvic area and moving away from that and just doing more general exercise, um, viewing it as something that I did before and that I've always enjoyed doing um, and um, something that is of benefit generally to me as an individ individual, not just because 
I have these symptoms um, was was definitely a step forward. Um, and, you know, for me, the physical activities that I've talked about with things that I've enjoyed doing beforehand. So it also meant um, a return to meaningful activities and just getting back to normal. Um, so, yeah, physical activity, definitely uh, um, one of the three. Um, the next one I've put down is cognitive behavioural therapy. Um, so for me, there's uh, definitely a psychological component to this condition, as I suppose there is with any health condition. But I felt particularly with this condition, um, there's, there's definitely a psychological angle. Um, and for me, realising that my experience of the symptoms um, were really about how I was responding to stressors, how I was responding to physical sensations in my body um, was quite groundbreaking um, because it meant that I could do something about it. Um, and I viewed this as something that I could manage and control rather than something that was just happening to me. Um, so I think that was quite empowering. Um, but also, as I said before, um, I had developed quite a lot of health anxiety um, and my thinking had become quite distorted um, and my sort of life had been impacted by the levels of anxiety that I was experiencing. So I wanted to do something about the anxiety because um, I recognised that that was, you know, an issue that I needed to work through. Um, and the CBT, uh, um, it, it just gave me a number of tools that I could use that would allow me to really check in with what was going on with me at a particular, at a particular time. Um, and I was, I was actually amazed at how you can do some quite simple things to improve the way that you think and feel about things. Um, and I think that the, those are tools that I will use the rest of my life. Um, I've definitely learned a lot um, from doing that therapy. Um, and yeah, we'd, we'd definitely encourage people to, to sort of um, to look at that. Um, the, the course I did was online um, and I got that through my employee assistance program at work, but I think it is available through the NHS as well. Um, it's called Silver Cloud. So yeah, I would um, definitely recommend that. Um, the third one is, it's a bit of a catch-all, <laughs> um, but I've got uh, mindfulness, breathing techniques and meditation. Um, so Carl, with your help, um, I identified that I needed to take the focus off uh, the pelvic region um, generally. Um, you know, I wanted to be aware of what was happening in, in that area of my body, but not more than any other area. Um, and so you suggested a number of mindfulness exercises, a number of breathing exercises that I could do um, just to rebalance things a bit more. Um, and, you know, these were all things that were really, really simple um, and could be integrated into day to day life. Um, so um, and, and again, are probably things that I'll keep up, um, you know, for the rest of my life, really, just ways of dealing with stress. Um, you know, if I'm experiencing particular things in my body, then I'll probably use a lot of these things um, in future. So um, that was that was definitely really important. And um, also getting into meditation. So I've, I've been interested in meditation and I actually wanted to get into it for a while. Um, I read a couple of books before I got these symptoms um, about it. Um, but yeah, I, I have got into meditation as a result of having these symptoms. Um, and for me, particularly Vipassana um, meditation, it helps um, because it teaches you to focus in, in on different physical sensations in your body. Um, but really, I, think I suppose, put very, very simply um, to view them with indifference. Um, so not to become too emotionally invested in any particular physical sensation. Um, and that a it taught me to take the focus off symptoms in my pelvis 
and B, it also helped with my response to any symptoms. So just how I would respond if I had a particular symptom. Um, and, you know, I still have sensations in my pelvis now. Um, they haven't gone away, um, but my response to them is very, very different. Um, and I think that's definitely been a huge contributing factor. And I will, I think I will meditate for the rest of my life just because I find it so, um, you know, it just brings me a lot of peace and it definitely relaxes me. Um, and it, it brings you back into the present, which when you're really stressed out with stuff is, is hugely beneficial. So yeah, those are the three. And I think I touched on this before, but I think a combination of those things really um, has got me to a place where I'm viewing any sort of residual symptoms or physical sensations um, that I experience as being just that periodic sensations, um, not something to um, be emotionally vested in, not something to respond to significantly to. Um, and yeah, that's that's where I am. It's lovely. What a <clears throat> what a great insight into what's been helping for you as well. And thank you for your openness and honesty. Mental health, anxiety, worries, concerns. You know, we are um, born of our mind, and the world that we live in is also part of that as well. So we can't dismiss the mind as as being. Um, not integral here but to say that your thoughts or your feelings your work you know your pain is in your head there's that's a very different statement but being aware of the the connections you know I, I i my head isn't in a formaldehyde jar my brain isn't something i can physically tangibly take out and see it is integral to me as well hmm. and you know I, I guess reflecting on what you were saying here adam even when you're <clears throat> being more physically active that's going to help you mentally if you are doing an activity and maybe you're getting a sensation in your pelvis then you can you know extinguish that and manage that through doing some cbt type approaches and mindfulness almost encompasses much of this as well um even simply being aware sitting here at the moment i can let my shoulders relax a little bit more i can take a slightly deeper breath i can feel sensations in my pelvis that are normal I can feel the chair pressing up against my sit bones and my sit bones pressing down against the chair. I'm, I can feel my trousers, but they're normal sensations. And when you're in this place of recovery, then, then things like that normalize and you're able to kind of um, have much more of a, a neutral response to sensations that bubble back up again. So kudos to you. It, it, it is a journey. And as you said, that you've learned an awful lot of tools and techniques that you'll just use in your day to day life because, well, one, you enjoy them, you find benefits in them, but they can help us to navigate. I mean, goodness me, we're January 2022. It has been a insert your own word here past 22 months. So, yeah, using those techniques just out there in the big wide world will be incredibly helpful. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> If you could throw back time, if you could wind back to, um, let's say when your symptoms began again, perhaps more recently, um, as opposed to in your early twenties, but if there is a message for your early twenty self as well, then what would you what would you say to yourself if you could wind back time and, and give yourself a little whispering in your ear? Yeah, I think probably two things. One would be uh, prioritize your self care um because i don't think i've always done that very well um and i think i you know at certain points in my life i've suffered as a result so that would definitely be one of them um i think the other one would probably be uh be mindful um of the limitations of the biomedical treatment model um and you know, I suppose don't don't necessarily believe everything that you get told by doctors and urologists and um, other healthcare professionals, and be open to other forms of treatment, um, which for me, you know, have been hugely beneficial. Um, so I think yeah, those would probably be the two points. 
Mm, yeah, wise words. And thank you very much, Adam. The biomedical model is there for a reason. It can work very well in certain circumstances and situations. And there are certainly, excuse me, people that do recover if it is a bacterial infection through partly the use of antibiotics, but also other other aspects of, of just generally looking after ourselves. Yeah. Can I pull up pull you up on something you said? I just want you to expand on that a little bit more, if that's okay. So you said not to neglect your own self care. Yeah. What does that mean for you, Adam? Um, I think it's being aware that you need to have self care. That's the first thing because sometimes, sometimes you're not always aware of that. Um, and you know, I can think of particular times in my life where you know I put work first, for example, when I sh you know possibly above my own well being or. Um, and it's interesting that you know some of the in some of the therapy that I did they use the analogy of the oxygen mask in an airplane um you know you can't actually help other people unless you help yourself first so um I think that's something I've not always been very good at doing and recognizing that I need to do um so yeah yeah me too <laughs> yeah yeah, so, so yeah, absolutely. Making time and space for yourself and, and not prioritizing other things because ultimately you can't work as well as you want to uh, or are required to if you're not looking after yourself, can you? As one of the examples you gave there. Yeah. Fantastic. So that already you've got lots of wonderful, lovely messaging here for those people that are in the throes of their pelvic pain and very much in their journey. Is there anything additionally or maybe in summary that you'd like to um to impart to those that are still struggling and are in recovery yeah i mean i think um i think probably the main point would be uh be patient and don't give up the faith um because you know i know certainly from my own experience um things don't necessarily happen quickly in terms of recovery um, and it takes a lot of effort and thinking and tr trying different approaches to find out what works for you. Um, but, you know, I think that the, the body has an amazing capacity to heal um, and, um, you know, definitely keep the faith that you can get beyond this and that you can find your own way of, um, you know, getting beyond this wise words and there are times when our faith is definitely challenged isn't there i don't mean from a mm. from a religious point of view but from our hope and what is the point and do i even bother um so yeah absolutely yeah try and see the bigger picture again really really wise words adam thank you so much for your insight thank you once again for sharing your story and being generous enough to give your time in helping others who are going through this process at the moment um always a pleasure to catch up um thank you very much okay thanks carl